I see my name in shiny lights, yeah. A different city every night. Oh, I, I swear the world better prepare for when I'm a billionaire. It's time to get down to business on the weekend's number one business program. Known as the king of networking, your host, Shalom Klein, has worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and created countless jobs. So, to success, let's get down to business. And indeed, we are all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship and business. We talk a lot about business here. You are on with Get Down to Business, and I'm your host, Shalom Klein. Remember, you can always download podcasts from Get Down to Business on my website at shalomklein.com. And while you are there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss. So let's jump right in. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by best-selling author and renowned leadership consultant, Devar Zak, whose latest book, The Cactus and Snowflake at Work, How the Logical and Sensitive Can Thrive Side by Side, actually literally just came out. And uh, I'm excited to talk about uh, this fantastic read. Devar, welcome to the program. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Absolutely. So let's talk about you first and how uh, how you uh, have developed your expertise, uh, certainly in leadership. And, and obviously, we'll, uh, we'll get into uh, the cactus and the snowflake in just a moment. So Devar, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I have a leadership development company that's in its 25th year, and I have four books that are translated into 45 languages. And I travel internationally, helping people understand themselves and others better. And uh, I heard you're the king of networking. So maybe you've heard of one of my books called Networking for People Who Hate Networking. <laughs> so it seems like we have a lot in common. <laughs> I was going to bring that up. Yes, the book is Networking for People Who Hate Networking, Single Tasking and Managing for People Who Hate Managing. And um, I've been getting through the book, actually. So uh, really, really exciting. So we definitely have a lot in common. And I know that you've received many, uh, many fantastic uh, recognitions, very well deserved, including um, Forbes top networking book in 2019, top five self-help book, self-help books, and so on. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to jump into this, the cactus and the snowflake at work. So again, I'm chatting with Devar Zak, uh, who has just come out with this fantastic, fantastic book. And you argue in the book, which I'm working my way through, that the best use of our energy is to focus on our own reactions and perceptions rather than trying to fix other people. Uh, how do you come to that conclusion? Well, it, I realized that there's only three things in the world that we can directly control, our own thoughts, our own words, and our own actions. And instead of focusing on what we can control, a lot of us spend much time in our own minds correcting people and thinking that we know better than them and uh, that they should be different somehow. So it's a real reframe to say, well, what about if everyone's exactly the way they're supposed to be and it's up to me to meet other people where they're at? It's so a much the, more successful way of engaging with others. With the with the titles of uh, Cactus and Snowflake, I know that there's a deep meaning behind that. So I'd love to understand sort of who the personality uh, types are of each and what traits differentiate the cactus and the snowflake. And when it comes to the workplace, what's the benefits and the challenges of each? So the cacti leads with his or her head and the snowflake leads with his or her heart. So the cactus, the primary characteristics of the cactus is more logical, analytical, and direct in their engagements. And the snowflake is more sensitive, empathetic, and diplomatic. And in the workplace, we always have a mix of each. And they really have completely different drivers uh, from each other. However, one thing that's important to be aware of from the very start is that we're, we're not generally just one or the other. Think, imagine a continuum. Um, so a few people are off the chart, a snack cactus or off the chart snowflake. Most of us are somewhere in the middle. So it's important to keep that in mind that there's not just two types of personality, but there's really a, a lot of different nuances to, to keep in mind. So when it comes to the business community and the business world, uh, what temperament is, uh, is more common? Great question. It's actually about even. And uh, some people think that one or the other is better uh, than at networking, better at uh, building rapport. In fact, what really makes someone successful is by working with instead of fighting against their natural temperament. So the first step is to understand who you are and then to accept it and then to translate what you might consider a liability, whether you're a cactus or a snowflake, into your strengths. They both, have their, they both have their own superpowers. And, and the, the way to be the most successful is to be 
true to who you are instead of trying to be somebody else, while at the same time doing what I call flexing your style, which is being flexible in how you communicate with others. Well, that's that's fascinating information from the, uh, again, bestselling author of uh, multiple books and, and renowned leadership consultant, Vara Zak. We're talking about the latest book, the, Ca- the Cactus and the Snowflake at Work, How the Logical and Sensitive Can Thrive Side by Side. It was just published on November 2nd. And uh, absolutely thrilled to have uh, Devar here to talk uh, about the leadership styles. And what I'm taking away from our conversation is that, um, again, be true to yourself and that one is not necessarily better than the other. Um, But I want to sort of uh, transition in our conversation um, to uh, our relationships at work. And certainly the workplace has shifted over the past uh, two years um, into a often a remote uh, workplace, but how do you have more positive and productive interactions at work, especially realizing that, as you just said, the cactus and the snowflake, it's almost split 50-50. Well, one important factor in having positive relationships and, and also successful relationships at work is to, is to be clear about um, meeting people where they're at. And the way to do that is what I call the big two. One is to observe other people and to notice for example, what kind of language they use. For instance, uh, the cactus tends to use the word think more often and the snowflake tends to use the word feel more often, especially people with stronger preferences. So the words are mostly interchangeable in in English. However, uh, you might pick up on these little clues that someone says, well, what did you think about that book? And well, I felt like I learned a lot from it and pick up on the language. That's one way of observing. You can also observe what people get excited about, what they talk about, other kinds of words they use that are thinker or feeler language. And the second way to meet people where they're at is simply to ask them how they prefer to receive feedback, how they prefer to attend meetings and so on. It's amazing how often we overlook the the usefulness of asking people what they prefer and then to be flexible in how we communicate. And that helps us build rapport and also increases productivity when we clue into uh, other people's preferences instead of wanting them to meet us where we're at. Absolutely. And um, we have all been a uh, victim of the uh, of the times that you know we've internalized a situation, whether it happens at work or maybe even at home. And uh, I tend to use a term catastrophize um, where you sort of go down a rabbit hole of, you know, this happened and that happened. And all of a sudden you're you're sort of homeless and on the street. Um, but you talk about in the book of how to transform what you think is a big event into a or a big deal into a non event. Can we talk about that for a moment? Sure thing. So the first uh, idea of the first concept of the non-event is that we one of us might go to a meeting and leave the meeting and say, wow, that was a disaster. Our entire group just came, was at odds with each other and everything's falling apart. And you might leave the same meeting and think it was fine. And it's not so much some people say, oh, is it about how we perceive conflict? It's, It's actually deeper than that. It's for you, literally that event didn't occur. And for me, it was a big deal. Same thing as if you talk to someone and they don't respond, maybe they really legitimately were preoccupied or didn't hear you. But for you, it might be that you were dissed and it was it was rude and this person's a jerk and uh, you don't wanna work with them anymore. And so for what one person is a big event and another person is a non-event. And some people would say to another person, just relax or it's not a big deal. And that's never helpful because the idea is, is it a big deal to the other person? So to your point, you said, uh, how do you turn an, a non-event or an event into a non-event in for yourself? There's also a lot of tools and techniques in the book around that. One, for example, is using a simple ruler from one to 12 or the metrics, if you prefer, and to say, how significant is this event in the big scheme of my life from one to 12? And very often you hardly ever get above a two or a three. So giving yourself a little perspective about uh, the significance of something that feels like a, a catastrophe and really maybe you won't even remember a week from now. Well, that's great advice, again, from a leadership consultant and best-selling author, uh, Devar Zak, and, and really uh, thrilled to, to have you. So uh, my last question is, of course, I want to make sure that our listeners can, uh, can find the book. And I'll, uh, I'll lump that in with uh, if you can share your website and, and where people can purchase this fantastic book, The Cactus and the Snowflake at Work, as well as just what's that one tip that you want our listeners to take away and put into action in the week ahead? 
Sure. So first of all, uh, thanks for asking. And this book is for sale in bookstores everywhere and online and Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Uh, you can also visit my website, which has a link to the book and, and other um, information about the work I do, cactussnowflake.com. And it's also myonlyconnect.com. Fantastic. That's that's great. And I know that you you post a lot of great information. And uh, where there's uh, where there's already uh, four books, there's certainly five and uh, five, there's six. So I know there's a lot more great advice and great information coming. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, continuing uh, to read The Cactus and the Snowflake at Work, How the Logical and Sensitive Can Thrive Side by Side. So I encourage all of our listeners to pick it up. Um, we're going to squeeze in a very quick break here and get down to business. The show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. When we return, we will continue our conversation um, with some great entrepreneurs doing great things. Check out my website, shalomkline.com. We'll be right back. 